Hello and welcome to the Angels Fall First uh, loadout tutorial video. So I'm making this video because Angels Fall First is a big game, it's got a lot of uh, mechanics, a lot of complexities, and many people get lost in loadouts. Now the best time to uh, swap your loadouts is, well right now as you can see in the menu yourself. Now when you first start out there's going to be several presets, none of the uh, ones I have here are the basic presets, they're all custom ones. So, but the standard presets are really good to uh, just get yourself familiarized with the weapons. And then when you go on, you want to change the loadout and create a new loadout, uh, it's best to do it in the menu or in the briefing area. So, just send a tell to everyone to hold up on readying up and start the next match. Uh, step outside the ready area to let everyone know you're not ready adjust your uh, loadouts and then head back in. So a lot of people are kind of confused because they are looking at this and they get a note kind of like, um, yeah, they get these notes, over support budget, over combat budget, or over command budget. So to let you know, here's your budget. Now there's a level up system in Angels Fall First, there's three different categories for your levels. You got your command level, which you get for doing objectives and giving and following orders. So if you're told to uh, move to a certain location, you get an arrow indicator, you can go there. Or you can tell generally your bot command, your bot uh, squad members to attack a target and they'll uh, follow it and you get the command experience, which will increase your levels and that level will increase your budget. So, looking at the costs, you see right here, 42 for your command, 42 for support, 36 for combat. There's uh, this silencing spec, it is pretty expensive. So, hit to empty, and you can look on the bar, you can see uh, which one's kind of expensive. So, if you find yourself uh, over support, look for something with a high blue one, and switch that to empty. Now there's two types of styles of builds. There's the Swiss Army Knife, where you try to fill out every single weapon and item slot. And then there's a, kind of a specialist build, where you pick a weapon, and then everything you, uh, you do specialist on tweaks, to uh, customize that weapon however you want. And you everything's built around that, so you won't have everything filled. It'll just be, here's your weapon, where you want it, and exactly how you're gonna make it. On specifications, except for the helmet and cockpit specs, usually there's always some sort of trade-off. So, as you see right here, I switched from view to stats, and I can tell you you're trading off. So, charge spec, you will decrease the cost of the charge time, but you'll also decrease your range. So, you're trading a reach for a faster rate of fire. When you first start your builds, uh, go ahead and leave the uh, internal specs and all the weapons and knife specs just leave them empty because how do you know whether you're going to be, according to your playstyle, are you going to need a faster charge speed or a fast or a lighter weight? The most you're going to focus on is on infantry and with starfires because they're going to be where you spend the most time at. Infantry has a suit option. It's the only one where you can kind of like change your suit and model. All the other uh, chassis, they're kind of just a standard. So you have your uh, medium suit. This is kind of like your utilitarian suit, jack of all trades. It has three helmet slots. Uh, now helmet specs, they kind of uh, affect pretty much like your HUD and uh, certain gameplay features. I'll go through them really quick. And then you got two armor slots, or body slots. Now as for the armor, they're kind of your armor points. Everyone starts with 200 hit points. Um, but armor, 
health doesn't regenerate without a med kit or returning to your carrier if you're in a starfighter. Armor regenerates over time, and then there's uh, sometimes you have a shield system. So, the medium suit for utilitarian has three helmets, two armor. The light suit has, well, it's light, it only has two helmet slots and one standard plating or armor. And then you got the heavy suit, which has one helmet slot and three armors. On the armor plating, you see standard plate adds 90 armor. When you have the uh, installation spec, the way they word it's kind of funny. Here it says adds 10 armor versus standard plating. So you think, wait a minute, standard plating gives 90, this one only gives me 10. It gives you 10 on top of 90, so this is actually 100 armor for insulation plane will stand just nine. Stand is kind of like a blank. The ammo is the one that reduces armor. Ammo gives you 80 armor for specs. A little note on the helmet. Uh, support, you equip this, as you see, you get an extra kit. So that becomes a lot. And you click turtle, goes away. Tell Turtle gives you a little regen if you're crouched or if you're just not sprinting. Salt gives you adaptive armor. Basically, if you keep getting hit by one thing, you get a little bit of resistance. Agility it involves your sidearm as well as with the light suit, you can uh, jump really far. I will recommend on the leveling spec that uh, you don't pick this first until you get towards the higher ranks. Usually like if you already uh, maxed out one of your uh, one of your levels to the max 25. Because what it does is redirects XP to the lowest rank channel. If you just started, the lowest rank channel would be everything. It wouldn't give you any benefit. And it will just basically uh, prolong you expanding your budget by opening up your command levels or support levels to one or two so you can don't worry about this until much later as the melee there's just a knife doesn't matter which one you're in there's nothing different you can add a spec but as i said you see all these specs are very expensive this one costs in all three categories so uh, increase your levels first and then worry about spec. Uh, the primary and secondary are the same pretty much. All the weapons you have in the primary are also the same uh, options you have in the secondary. The sidearm is the only one that's restricted. Now again I said with the agility spec you can both uh, sprint, hold down shift, default key, and shoot. So if you want a running gun, uh, you're building a running gun mod this is what you would be able to use while sprinting. Otherwise, just go ahead and leave the uh, multi wrench. It costs nothing and it's very useful because you use this to revive people, you use this to repair vehicles, turrets, armor. Health doesn't regenerate except for uh, med packs. So, on weapons, sights is pretty much just the zoom. Some weapons have an uh, option to equip like a uh, Underslung, which for the stabilizer is just a stat boost, but you can include a, like a front shield, kind of like an energy riot shield, or include a different weapons like rockets or a flamethrower. To use these underslung weapons, use the switch fire mode, so default key would be X. All projectile weapons and grenades as well tend to have different uh, ammunition types. So the standard ammo is your generic ammunition, hardpoint ammo, you end up doing more damage to armor and vehicles at the cost of, well, kind of just uh, a budget, but not so much against uh, health too. I'll explain the uh, elemental effects when I get to grenades, but corrosive adds acid, shock adds EMP, and cinder adds the heat or fire. And again, you got internals. I recommend you leave the internals pretty much empty until you leveled up. 
as again it's just so you can get used to your weapon and figure out exactly your place out what you need more do you need higher magazine uh, size at decrease of reload time or do you want faster reload at the increase of range going more close in so when you're first trying that out you're not going to kind of know exactly which you would like but if you wish gee i wish that reload wasn't uh fat, wasn't as long you can include a reload spec and you know well i should close up i'll spec for the reload Otherwise, if you are more far away, you might choose a magazine spec. You just lose reload time, but you don't lose range. Some weapons are energy weapons. Now, energy weapons tend to not have ammo type because they do, uh, well, they do quite a lot of uh, shield and armor damage, more the equivalent of hardpoint ammo. They do tend to heat up a lot, so if you do want to uh, use a spec, maybe a queen spec, would be to uh, control the heat to generate. All weapons actually do generate heat, but plasma and some of the heavy machine guns are the ones that will have your heat interfere with uh, your performance. And then of course you got the barrel. So a barrel is kind of more of like a stat increase for weapons, similar to internals. Moving on to grenades, there's only Three types of grenades and a death pack. The uh, grenades, they're just kind of like, uh, the other two are kind of like smart grenades. One has a gyro grenade in which where it bounces, it will uh, kind of bounce towards the nearest enemy. Neat. Spring grenade is kind of like, it bounces and then it goes up and air burst. Larger radius. And also uh, against people that like maybe hiding behind cover or something like that. Other than that, uh, if you're time of budget, just go to regular grenade. Now, mines, bullets, and grenades have different types of elemental effects. So, smoke charge is just harmless. That's just used for, uh, that's not an elemental effect. It's just used to break line of sight. You notice that the uh, icons you see, uh, they tend to highlight where people are, and they can even highlight when they go around the corner. You put a smoke down, you can turn that into a question mark, as in uh, lets the, uh, the other person's HUD knows they lost sight of you and uh, that's a way to break locks, break detection. Fragmentation is just straight up down. The corrosive shock incendiary apply an elemental effect. I'll start with the easiest one. Incendiary is simple uh, damage over time effect. Also, you cannot use med kits or get healed because, well, right now you're on fire. So, fire needs to go out first. Shock is an EMP effect. Some weapons, like the uh, rail gun, also, uh, our charge weapons, you have to hold down the trigger to charge it before it can shoot. If you get hit by an EMP, uh, you can't charge up your weapons, so it's a great way to stop those. Corrosive, basically, while it's in effect, uh, makes you uh, more exposed to other elemental effects and explosives. So you take more damage. Also, corrosive, when they hit you, they uh, apply uh, they reduce your max uh, hit points and armor points on your health bar, usually like around here. You'll see uh, uh, two triangles and the letter C-O-R, that sounds good for corrosive. That's basically your new uh, max HP and AP. If you have health and armor above that, that's fine, but once it goes below, you can only repair up to the uh, bar that says corrosive until you like redeploy. Munition packs, whenever you're out of ammo, munition packs, you drop it and refill any ammo. Medical packs, the only way to heal health. Global shield, auto sentry incinerator, it's basically a flamethrower turret. And the ULA has their machine gun turret. AIA, they have a plasma turret. Infantry is where you're going to be spending your most uh, time at, but in space, it's going to be, well, it's going to be the fighters. For fighters, you have your scout, your interceptor, your assault fighter, and your bomber. Now, there is no different chases, like infantry, which has three different suits, so that's your light, medium, heavy. Whenever you're in a vehicle or a starfighter, your cockpit specs will override your helmet specs. So if you are an infiltrator as infantry and you jump into one uh, fighter that doesn't have an infiltrator spec, you no longer have the infiltrator benefits. 
with the scout, there is only one armor slot, two cockpit slots. Countermeasures are kind of the same. Uh, AIA has a drone that shoots down uh, missiles. ULA has uh, flare decoys. Primary, hardpoint, and mine. So your primary, the Starfires, it's kind of like the infantry. They have access to all the weapons regardless. It's just that other Starfighters happen to have more weapon slots than the Scout. So, but you can put an ion cannon on a scout or an assault fighter. It doesn't make a difference, and you can spec it out. Same for hard points. Any uh, hard point on a assault fighter can go on a scout. It's basically just uh, the maneuvering health that you have. Scouts tend to have uh, one cock two cockpit slots, one armor slot. Primary, hardpoint, and mines. Interceptors will have two cockpit slots, two body slots, two primaries, a hardpoint, and a mine. And that's pretty much it. There is some uh, faction different weapons for primaries, uh, not much for. Uh, the fighter is kind of like the heavy. It has three armor slots or by slots and one cockpit slot. Two primaries or primary secondary and a hard point. Now a little note here is you can sort of make the um, primary the same but you can't shoot them at the same time. All I can do is fire one while the other one's reloading. Now the bomber is the only one that has a different, uh, has three body, one uh, assault, kind of like the assault fighter. But the bomber is the only one with the heavy bay that has either the faction specific heavy weapon or a torpedo. So ULA has real guns. AIA has the heavy plasma cannon, both sides Now with vehicles and also the uh, non-carrier capital ships, you don't have to spend too much time uh, just in the preset because you're only going to get them on offer and if the map allows it. LAVs, again, just like the fighters, you can't change the chassis, unlike uh, infantry and suits. Three cockpits and a body, a uh, mine layer and a turret. A little note on uh, LABs and the turret, well actually all turrets, is that they have like a AI uh, control, so if they aren't equipped, they can still shoot. So you can kind of like uh, park your hair LAB with a railgun and get out and it will kind of act like a turret in its own right. Mechs, not so much, they do need a pilot two cockpits and a body. They're actually louder than your typical mech. They are... They do have uh, different arm weapons. Like two of the same weapon, you can't shoot them both at the same time. You can only fire one or the other. So all you're doing is just allowing you to uh, shoot one weapon while the other one reloads. Now with the ULA, there tend to be more uh, standard type vehicles, so you'll see wheels and tracks. The uh, IFB is kind of like your APC, carries all, it's a, it's a quick transport. Also has some pretty good uh, weapons too. But as you can see, you can't really change the weapon out. AIA is a hover transport. And as you see, three cockpit uh, specs and two body armor specs. You can change the turret out, but not, not the driver turret. Gunships now, a note on the AIA Locust gunship is the Locust gunship has a hover ability. You know, for those in space, uh, fighter controls, if you hit the middle mouse wheel by default, 
it triggers kind of like a, a Newtonian motion where you can kind of just spin around without flying that direction. So if someone's on your six, you can turn around and shoot them. Here, it triggers a hover, so it acts like a helicopter more than a than a bomber. Though you can't change the power turret, and you got different hard points, bombers, missiles, and rockets. Now the ULA doesn't have a hover mode, instead they got a second gunner seat, a tail gunner. Again, just like the LAV, this gunner has an AI control if it's unmanned, so you can, it will shoot and stuff. Hard points, you got the bomblets, and the rockets, and the missiles. The ULA tanks can't really change the, the main gun, but you can change the, or the secondary but you can change the turret. Note on the ULA Parson tank is it's not the hover tank like the uh, AIA, but hidden space allows you to kind of uh, prop up or elevate your tank in a fire uh, platform, fire support. AIA is a hover tank. <laughs> Again, can't change your uh, secondary or your primary, but you can change your turret. And like the LED, turrets will operate unmanned. Low AI control. Now in space, you're often given like vehicle offers for kind of the uh, smaller non-carrier ships. All the carrier ships, they're pre-built, so they have everything. You don't really need to worry about that. This is kind of for more of your uh, smaller escort ships if you want to specialize them. Again, you can't change the chassis. But for Corvettes, two co three cockpits and a body. Countermeasures is going to be the same regardless. It's just going to be. Uh, Drones for AIA, flares for ULA. The first slot you can't change in this. The second one is your missiles. Now these missiles are kind of all the same. Uh, in space and on ships. Home missile, swarm missiles. You hold down lock, you can lock on multiple ones, targets. You can do that for any missiles. Longer range, sends two, and this one's just kind of like an anti ship missile. Those can't change, mines are mines. Secondary turrets can't change, but you can spit out. And second. ULA. Pretty much the same for cop and body, but kind of a different uh, loadout as the ion missiles. Main turrets, which can't be changed. And two secondary missiles. Turrets you can only spec, you can't uh, change that. Destroyers are more of like a anti-ship vessel. They're good with their ion turrets. The AIA has more ion turrets, <laughs> along with the spinal one. So, AIA destroyers are really good in this game sometimes. <laughs> and then finally, the line ship. Cockpit, three bodies, the heavy ship. Ion beams, can't change it. Missiles, plasma, millions. Pretty much this is like the only thing you can change. This and mines. ELA has the ions as well. 
missiles, but it also has rocket pods. Well, I hope this gives you a better understanding of loadouts. Again, if you want to experiment, uh, go ahead and go to the tile screen or just in the uh, briefing area. Hope this makes your gaming experience for Intel First a lot easier.